And I'm joined now by the president of the Australian Jewish Association, David Adler. Well, we ventilated a bit of this uh, this horror vote over the weekend then with Dennis Shanahan, and he makes the point that there's a real gutlessness mm -hmm. of the federal government. The prime minister, of course, went out and said there was no change in position about a month ago when Penny Wong gave a speech, said we were headed down this uh, this end, and there was no change until there was change on Friday night. That's the problem. How does the Jewish community react after this vote? Uh, Peter, as you would expect, the Jewish community is shocked, devastated, angry. But most of all, there is a feeling of real betrayal from our government. Uh, not only has it turned uh, on Israel, our only democratic ally in the Middle East, uh, it has turned on the Jewish people. Uh, this will undoubtedly uh, fuel the hostility that we see on places like the university campuses. Uh, it will embolden uh, more anti-Semitism. Uh, it has also betrayed our important allies uh, in AUKUS with the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, Australia is now isolated as the only country which has voted uh, in favour of this resolution. Finally, it has betrayed the Australian people. It is contrary to our values to align this country with, uh, with Hamas. It is handing a reward to the terrorists. Um, it's like Australia is serving the terrorists. We don't mind that you were murderers, rapers, uh, took hostages, uh, the most barbaric acts, killed uh, the most Jews since in one day since the Holocaust. That doesn't matter. We will mm. support you because that's what it signals. Well, we're missing some uh, countries Dreadful. there on that graphic I put up about the... Uh, uh, those who voted against this motion. We're missing, of course, the United States and others. There were nine in all. But we broke with our major allies. We broke with the United States and we broke with mm. Britain and Canada. Uh, that's what I can't understand. And, and I also can't understand, picking up Dennis's point, why the government didn't go out and argue, at least try and attempt to argue, why this was necessary for Australia to junk 70 years of bipartisanship on this policy. Um, I felt gutted over the weekend, David, when I saw this play out. I was watching most of the coverage on Saturday morning. Um, your community, you know, beyond all the officials that you deal with, how, how does it, the ordinary Jewish Australian feel? It's been a very rugged uh, eight or so months now. But after this vote by their own government, how do they feel? Well, more and more we see uh, hostility, frankly, uh, to Israel, we see a failure to deal with some of the uh, social problems and notably uh, the rise in anti-Semitism uh, is a terrible problem. We see the weakness uh, in dealing with the issues on the university campus and I know you've commented on this before and you alluded to the fact mm. that in some uh, electorates there is, in some Labor electorates, there's a significant Muslim vote. Well, pretty well top of the chart is the Minister for Education, Jason Clare, and his seat of Blacksland, which has over 30% Muslims. And you've got to ask the question, is that part of the reason why, why he fails to act and discharge his responsibility to make sure that all groups of students uh, feel safe on our university campuses. Um, we think it's a real tragedy. Um, there is a sense of, of betrayal, uh, and I don't know how to put it uh, stronger than that. This is not the Australia um, that we recognised a few years ago. You make mention of those violent university protests. We've obviously seen the police come into campuses overseas, but not in Australia. Over the weekend, Jennifer Westercott, who, who people will know from her former job with the yeah. Business Council of Australia, she's now the Vice Chancellor of Western Sydney University. She came out very strongly, condemned these protests and anti-Semitism. But the head of Melbourne Uni, the Chancellor there, Jane Hansen, well, she refused to call out any specific anti-Semitism crisis without, within uh, higher education. You've mentioned there Jason Clare, you're kinder than me. I think he's absolutely motivated by the constituency in his seat. I think he's absolutely motivated by that. 
And we know too, on a number of university campuses, staff were told, don't confront protesters if they barge their way into your classroom. Let them have their say. Now, why on earth should any student who wants an education, particularly a Jewish student, be forced to put up with this in the lecture theatre or in the tutorial room? One thing to protest outside, David, but why should be brought into the classroom? Well, you're right. And you've got to ask the question, are our universities to be centres of education or are they to be primarily centres of radical activism uh, and indeed anti-Australian activism? Uh, and it's fine for people to have a different perspective on political issues, but there are certain lines which these groups have clearly crossed. When you are chanting for mm. an intifada, you are expressing support for a violent uprising against Jews. That's what an intifada is. It involved uh, murder, knife attacks, uh, bombs, suicide bombings of civilians, of buses. It's a mass murder program. That's what an intifada is. And if the university administration allows uh, teaching to be disrupted with calls of intifada, they are giving the wave through for incitement of violence against the Jews, against the Jewish students. That's what intifada is. Um, there is no excuse for it uh, in this country. It is not an expression of a political opinion. It is uh, an, an expression of support for a program of violence. As horrific as it is, you're absolutely right, David Adler. Thank you for your time. I wish the result had gone the other way. And I know a lot of Australians stand with the Jewish community after that vote.